So a few weeks ago, OnePlus released the Oreo 8.0 update for the OnePlus 3 and 3T through the open beta program, which is great. And this video is designed to show you everything that's new with this update on these phones. Now, it is definitely not without its bugs, but if you are interested in upgrading yourself, then I'll leave a link below that explains how to sign up to the beta program, which will get you on your way. Without further ado, let's get into the changes. So first things first, the lock screen. A very small change here with a lowercase day and date under the clock instead of all caps, which we previously saw on Nougat devices. Unlocking the device and the first thing we'll take a look at is the new and updated notification shade. So when you first swipe down, you can see we have a blue accent for the notification toggles now, which to be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of at the start, but it does grow on you slightly, particularly if you use the light theme. You can also probably see we now have six quick toggles that we can access here, which is now in line with how many you get on pure stock Android. Again, that blue color accent carries throughout the entire notification shade, which looks fairly similar to our previous Nougat notification shade. With some slight alterations in what toggles we have access to and how it's laid out, but for the most part, very much the same. Notifications have also been given several overhauls, both visually and in functionality. Firstly, as has always been the case, new notifications show in that top left corner, no difference there. But where you will notice a difference is when you drag down your notification shade, which now colorizes that notification icon very seamlessly. Then as you continue dragging down, it moves with the bottom of the notification shade and then transforms into the full size notification when you get to that expanded portion of the notification shade. This is particularly visually interesting when you have several notifications as they all pop into place one by one, which looks and feels very cool. We also now have the ability to snooze notifications, which is amazing and very helpful, as well as categorizing them into notification streams, although the apps do need to have been updated to support this feature, which most have not been as of the recording of this video, but this will become a very handy feature as more apps get supported. Notifications also have a different look when using any sort of music player application, whether that's Spotify or something else, as they now adapt to the album art of whatever you're playing and colorizes the notification accordingly. This is just a visual change, but I do really like this one. We also have a slightly updated settings menu. It's definitely not condensed on Oxygen OS as it is with stock Android. In fact, I think it's pretty much the same layout as we saw with the Nougat update, but it still looks a bit cleaner and it now has that blue color accent as well. The home screen launcher has also been updated. We have a new look to the folder layout, which definitely steers a little away from stock Android, but it still looks and feels really nice. And we also have the older Pixel dock setup still here from the more recent Nougat beta updates. We also now have notification dots and application shortcuts, which visually match those on the Pixel devices running Oreo. Now, both of these features are really cool because not only do they display when you have an unread notification, which is great, but you also gain access to quick shortcut features to launch different toggles within supported apps. And we can also now interact with the notifications within these shortcut menus, which is great. Very iOS-esque, which is a good thing. One slightly less noticeable, but still very handy change that comes with this Oreo update on the OnePlus devices is refined control of the media volume slider. On previous versions, there were only about eight different levels to choose from, which made it very hard to get the volume level absolutely bang on. But now we've got plenty of small incremental volume levels, which is something I definitely appreciate big time. Picture in Picture has also been introduced with this update, but for me, this only seems to work with Google Maps and I can't get it working for YouTube, Chrome, or anything else for that matter. So there's still some work to be done there. We also have a brand new set of emojis, which to be honest, I'm still getting used to and I miss the previous blob emojis, but that's there. And finally, we also get some really handy Bluetooth updates, which will allow you to quickly change between audio sources when you have a Bluetooth device connected. And you also now get a battery level indicator for your connected Bluetooth device in the status bar, which is really handy. Now, as I said earlier, this beta update does not come without its flaws and its bugs, which is to be expected for such an early release. But the main issues for this update is that there seems to be fairly significant battery drain and some overheating, but there has been a new update released as I've been making this video. So hopefully some of these issues are dealt with as a part of that update. Anyway, that is pretty much every update I can think of to show to you guys. There's obviously some additional changes under the hood that makes the user experience even better. But if you're concerned with the battery drain and overheating issues I mentioned, then it might be best to wait before upgrading your own device. But anyway, I'm really excited to see how this OS gets refined over the coming months until we see the stable build released, hopefully sometime before the end of the year. But that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. But aside from that, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you later.